true story of the three little pigs, as told to John Sieska, illustrated by Lane Smith. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because no one has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we were. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cough and I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig. He wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without a cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt the sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a great sneeze. You know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of a pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have a cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell of the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but there was this guy's house falling down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf, don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday Card instead of a cake when I felt a cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. 
Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when someone talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down the pig store, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't actually sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's a real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. The end. The book we just read, The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, is considered a fractured fairy tale. Fractured fairy tales are fairy tales that have been changed from the original story. Today we're going to make our own fractured fairy tales. So, you need one piece of paper and scissors. And of course, stuff to write your book with. So, we're going to take the piece of paper and you're just going to fold it halfway just in half and then just crease it and then take what you have already and literally just fold it over and crease it again so you should have this rectangle shape okay then you're going to carefully open it and you'll notice it has four it has four squares you're going to take your scissors and cut the middle two lines but you're going to make sure you don't go all the way because if you cut all the way through then it'll just fall apart and we don't want that so you're going to carefully take your scissors cut all the way almost to the top the little middle but you're not going to go all the way through and you're just going to literally flip it to the other side and do the same thing on this side and again i'm going to almost do it but not quite then you're literally just gonna pick it back up, put it together, and look, you'll have your own little book. If you want, you can staple it so it stays better, but if, if not, it works perfectly good. Okay, so whenever you're at your fractured fairy tale, you can do anything you want. You could do superhero pigs and a villain wolf, or you could you could do not even pigs. You can do whatever you want, and that's a fun part of this story. So once you write your story, you can put it into your book, and then you can read it to your siblings or whoever you want and tell them about the fractured fairy tale you made.